photo wasn't leaking, but if it's really pouring like this, it leaks in many places. Yep. Roof needs to be fixed quickly. This is a good day to check um, how much rainwater is actually getting into the building because they've always been quite dry on the inside. You know, the critical parts are the basements on the hillside where they underground so the water can come into the house. And uh, here you can see it's wet. You know, the wall is wet on the side because it's, it's dripping off the roof, you know, because there's no gutters. All of the water from the roof is ending up next to the house and it can kind of trickle into the wall. Um, this one is a bit better. It's a bit drier, like right there I can see more moist and here it's it's okay. I mean it's been day rain it, it's been raining for days so this is the moment to check it. I mean these are the wettest moments of the year. You know with the snow it's harder to tell because snow melts slowly. Uh, and the walls are good, except for this part here. You can see it. Let me just change the camera. Here, right here, you can see there's a bit of a dent. Here is going in a little bit. I think it's pushed by whatever is here, and it's also wet inside. Here, you can see. It's kind of hard to see, but stones are a bit darker and there's no more clay in between the stones, so it's kind of trickling out. And you can see, yeah, here you can see it's pretty wet. This is more moist and the soil is moist too. And there's also a little bit of a bolt, how do you say that, a dent in this wall from that side, so the earth is pressing in. And here as well, uh, there's a lot of spiders here. <laughs> this is actually from snakes because it's kind of slimy stuff. Uh, snakes have walked here and many spiders. There's a big spider there. And this is a stone roof as you can see. It's the only part, only the, the back side of this cabin has a stone uh, floor, I mean, not a roof. Roof too, but this is the floor. Alright, I'm gonna get out of here. This is not a nice space to be in. You can also smell it. You can smell the moist. Over there you can see it as well. There's a few spots which are darker. It's right there. And there. And there too. So I have to dig the outside out and create some sort of barrier so the moist cannot go inside. The stone house on the hill. A stonemasoner explained me this. If they would build it properly, they would first excavate the hill and then they would build the house here. Like that. And then they would fill this up with rocks. And also here on the side, next to the house. Because rainwater, if it comes down and it falls down here, it would travel on the upper soil toward, towards the valley. It doesn't go that deep because the soil is much more dense here. So the first 30, 40, 50 centimeters that's where the water goes down and then when it comes here because there are rocks it's able to drain down and would go next to the house and then towards the river and that's how you keep this part dry but there will always be a little bit of soil building up here the rocks might not be that dense and if there's a lot of water coming down it will eventually get into the house if it's built like that like not waterproof walls and that's also the case here so what I have to do is excavate this again and then build a barrier here so the water 
will go down and will not go through the barrier. see the river very clearly. So much rainfall yesterday and the day before. Yeah, it's a white river now.
that's the last stop. Everything's looking good, no leaks. I can fill all the trenches and uh, be done with it. I hope it's buried deep enough. It's about half a meter. Some places a bit more shallow. There's a few places where it's really shallow and I put insulation on the pipes. Because sometimes there's a very big stone on the ground and just just left it there. It's too much digging. And uh, yeah, some people were mentioning the, 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 the pipe I digged in last time for the, the outdoor kitchen and the outdoor shower. That is definitely too shallow for winter, but it's a temporary one. Just for this year, because, because eventually the outdoor shower is going to be more uphill here, connected to this one. And the outdoor kitchen little tap is going to be eventually sourced from inside the second cabin uh, through the wall. So eventually that line will be uh, redundant. So much snow still on the mountains. There's been a lot of rainfall the last uh, few days. And it's nice, you can see the trees pop green, like one, two. It's beautiful. We need some warm weather, it's still cold. We're gonna have another look over there. That house that is visible from here. It's down from the ghost town because the ghost town is a little bit more up. It's not for sale, but it's looking quite good. We're gonna have a look. I think I was here about six weeks ago, chapter 10 or something, it's much greener now. The house I was talking about is a bit more down. This house there is also visible. 
and those small ones are for sale but I mean they're too small it's hard to sell That's a nice house. Roof is renovated. Not insulated though. But it's not for sale, but it might be, you know. So that's why it's good. Because this is a bit further in restoration than my house because the roof is done. You only need to do the insulation from the inside. So it's a bit of a different construction as my uh, uh, cabin. Um, but you know, they're, they're, it's better to, if you want to buy something like this, to go here, look around. Because if this was be online, it would probably be sold quicker than some of the other ruins. got a weather station uh, it's given to me by a viewer Adam thanks Adam really appreciate it and it's gonna be nice because it's gonna be able to tell me more about the weather the weather we're gonna talk more about the weather temperature rain wind and also I can see it from a distance so if I'm away for a few days I can um, see on my phone if this is connected to the internet, which will not be the case when I'm not here, but maybe later if I have a different kind of system. I can see from a distance what the weather here is at the house. So I'm gonna have to install it.
quite a mild day. Indoor temperature, outdoor temperature, humidity, wind direction. There's almost no wind. No rain today. Pressure. Yeah, and all kinds of things. I can upload this. I can log this also if it's connected to internet, but I'm not always here with internet, so I think it only makes sense to log the data if I have continuous internet here. I think I've answered to the clickbaity title now because that was not a wolf that was Romano's dog but I was also looking like wow what's that uh, so Romano is the old guy my neighbor living on the other side of the hill about two and a half kilometers down the road and he doesn't come here very often but when he goes for a walk his dog is always he's never on the leash because you know and he doesn't have a collar either, so that's why he, he already looks like a wolf, but without the collar even more. And he's always scavenging around. He's kind of a shy dog, but curious as well. Um, yeah, but I was, I'm, I was looking, I saw it in the corner of my eye. <laughs> um, but the creature on the trail cam though, at 3 a.m., that's a wolf, so I'm not lying.
little road trip. I needed a day off and uh, there's some inspiration about little cabins. So I'm traveling through uh, north of Italy, a bit of Switzerland, and then I'm looping back. Yeah, it's beautiful out here. But this is uh, just after the tunnel, the San Bernardo Pass. Pass is still closed, unfortunately, because I'd love to go that pass, but it opens late May. Because it's, um, it's 2,500 meters, so it's pretty high pass. Such a beautiful spot. You know, I've traveled off the freeway today, so I put my destination in Google Maps and then I turn off uh, toll roads or freeways. And it takes a lot longer, but you'll see so many beautiful things. Like the architecture, the old farms, the um, little old historic towns. There's so much to see. Which you don't see on the freeway, you know, because you just see gas stations and you're occupied by traffic and all the infrastructure is just further away when you're on the freeway. So I do this quite often and it takes a lot, a lot longer to, to, to get to your destination, obviously, but it's really worthwhile. And this was a really beautiful day, sunny day in spring. I wanted to get some inspiration for something like the roof for or the inner cabin which is going to be an outer cabin uh, and, and they do a lot of wood charring here I think I mean there's a lot of wooden houses and especially the older farms it's beautiful in design and the form and shape is really sort of more is more there's a lot of embellishments but then often the whole building is one type of wood and one color it's really beautiful I'm not sure if they're charring it um, Sometimes it looks like because it looks very dark, but often it's just age, I believe Because you can see that the wood is sort of gray and black on the bottom And then when it reaches the roof where you have a big overhang it becomes more like wood color again because the Sun doesn't come there and also the moist Doesn't come there so much. So I think that creates this difference and with charring you can create an effect too, you know, you just so you char it on the bottom and then once you get higher, closer to the roof, you just kind of sort of fade it out. It could be quite beautiful. I will do some experiments with it. Yeah, nice, nice little road trip. <laughs> 